It's such a beautiful day today. This is Hamilton, Montana. These are the Bitterroot Mountains and we get to look at this every day. We feel so lucky. Uh, down there, there's actually a pretty high water table. So that's why there's not a lot of houses right now. Um, if, you, if you decide to build down there, you have to kind of really raise your foundation. So there's just not a lot of building going on. But, and this being the weekend, today's July 25th. It's a sunny and just gorgeous day, great temperature. It's not too hot. It's probably in about the 80s. And uh, I've been working on my deck, uh, enjoying all the, the plants that I have here, some flowers, and I had kind of a makeshift studio for a while. Uh, this is uh, obviously during the pandemic, and uh, my husband's been working from home, and so I wanted to kind of set up my studio at home as well, just kind of um, have some supplies here so I could work from home. So another part of my morning routine is I take this Boak Superfood. It is an awesome product and um, mental focus, upbeat mood, clear thinking. That's what this product is all about. And it is all natural, um, I should know, because our sons, Kaylin and Evan, and my husband who's a biochemist, helped make this product. And um, it's been around for a little while now, but I've been using it and a lot of people say, how do you do so much and how do you have your energy? Well, this is my solution and I take it in the morning. I sometimes take it again at three in the afternoon when I'm getting a little kind of down and tired. Um, so for those of you who are following me, um, they're generously offering a discount to you. Just use the code art and success. Um, you'll find the link in my description. So I just thought I would point that out. Let's see how the garden's doing. I just like to come in here and uh, yeah, it's been a little bit of a downer obviously during this pandemic. So I love to come into the garden and you know, see what's growing. It's a sign of life, obviously. Um, this is kind of my happy place. So yeah, I've got all kinds of things growing in here and uh, our raspberries are just over there peak or maybe peaking right now. So we've been picking lots of raspberries. Have some tomato plants and cucumbers, a huge, enormous rhubarb plant, and then, you know, Swiss chard. And here's a little corner garden. Um, I covered my kale this year because we have so many aphids that come late in the season. And it's my attempt to try and eliminate some aphids strawberry plants, kind of have a shade cover and clematis and uh, drop more honeysuckle, trying to attract the birds, the bees, and uh, just butterflies. Uh, we've got some mason bee homes going and I grew this lavender from seed. I'm going to be dividing those plants and spreading them around the yard. And another thing, um, during this pandemic, I um, was scrolling on Instagram. Hi, Vincent. And all of a sudden, I just saw these um, really awesome shoes. What caught my eye about it, though, the company's name is Kariuma. And um, if you buy a pair of their sneakers, they'll plant a pair of trees in the Brazilian rainforest. As you might know, um, if you watch any of the nature programs or Planet Earth, um, they're always showing how they're mowing down the Brazilian rainforest and all of our trees are disappearing at like a record rate and it's just so sad. Well, with this company, if you buy a pair of their shoes, um, they will plant uh, a pair of trees for every pair of shoes that you buy. And if I refer somebody, then they get $20 off and they'll plant 20 trees. So I thought that is such an awesome idea. So you can find my referral link in the description below. Um, yes, I'm going to shamelessly promote them because I believe in the Brazilian rainforest. And here's my box, it just came. So I'm very excited. I haven't even opened this yet. So I'm gonna open it right now. I haven't tried these on yet. And they come in all different colors. Like they've even got this Pantone color line. So really bright colors. So as an artist, um, here's the inside of the box. It's awesome. I chose yellow because it's a bright color and I just can't wait to try these on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, if these don't make you happy, I don't know what would in this time of the pandemic. So I'm going to try these on. 
Here's how they're packaged. They're just so beautiful. They're canvas and they've got these super bright colors and it's just such a good cause. So like who wouldn't want to get a pair of these shoes and support the Brazilian rainforest? I just love this company. So hang on, I'm going to slip them on and show you how they look and I guess I'll show you how they feel as well. So hang on. Okay, so this is pretty awesome. Just look at the inside of the shoe. It's got like a cork lining and I, it just looks to me like I read their story on their website and um, so much thought has gone into making these. It's a, it's a, uh, some brothers that made this company and um, their story is actually pretty cool. So if you get a chance, take a look on their website. Okay, so I'm trying these on. Here's my right shoe. I'm size eight and a half. Okay, wow, these feel great. Vincent. Wow, these feel so good. And they're yellow. Aren't they cool? Wow. Okay, between the Vogue tab, the Vogue Superfood, and these sneakers, I think I'll be doing pretty well today, don't you? We'll have to go on a walk, don't you think? Yeah, there they are. Oh, they're so great. Let's see how they feel. So there they are. There they are. These are great. Okay, so now that I have my Vogue Energy and I've got my car you and my yellow shoes, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> ready for the day. Ready for the day. Here we go. These are super comfortable. Wow, they don't even need any breaking in. That's awesome. Okay, thanks Karyuma. Thanks, folks, Superfood. So this is where my studio is. I drive along Highway 93, and it's just a few miles away from my home, and uh, I've got my sign here. And so we're gonna go into my studio, and I'm, I'm actually renting the lower level of this uh, Rocky Mountain Grange. And uh, this uh, Grange is a pretty old building, but it's a wonderful building. And uh, after a home burned down in 2016, um, this is where I was able to uh, keep doing what I do, which I love to paint. I'm an artist and uh, feel really fortunate that um, there was a place for me to start all over again. I lost all my supplies and uh, I had like four studios in the old home. And uh, it was a 2016 uh, Roaring Lion fire. Uh, and our, our house was um, the second one to go down and uh, we lost uh, everything. So yeah, let's go inside. So um, yeah, here's the entrance to my studio and uh, this wall was built. It wasn't here before, but after the fire we had it built so I could have some privacy and lock things up. And then uh, I can have some works in progress or finished work or whatever. And Yeah, so basically, um, this is where I maintain my sanity, <laughs> what's left of it, at least I try. And during this pandemic, it's been quite a challenge. I'm sure everybody feels that way. This is a global crisis. And uh, this one of the reasons why I set up my studio, just like had some supplies at home because um, I just sort of felt like my husband was working, you know, uh, working at home, isolating in place. And um, I just wanted to be at home, uh, be able to do my work there. So I kind of just put, I took some supplies there and I, you know, selected what I wanted to work on and put them in these uh, crates and things like that, which I've now brought back because I want to work in the studio today. It actually feels really good to be in such a cooler space right now. Um, so just showing you a little bit about what's going on and at any given time, there's so much work in progress and some work that's done. Um, sometimes I have people coming to view the work, so I have to be ready at a moment's notice to kind of set things up more for presentation versus working. But um, all in all, um, I'm very, very fortunate to have the amount of space I have because I've got cabinets, um, for example, that these, these cabinets are um, some of them open so that I have storage um, where I can, you know, put like uh, I work in four mediums. So 
all the acrylics go in one uh, very tall storage unit and maybe all of my oil paints and cold wax medium go in another and then I've got encaustic back there. So it just, you know, being able to um, segregate the supplies helped me to become, um, I think, more efficient. And then there's all the equipment that's associated with um, recording what I do. Um, I like to document my work and share it with others through my online course or through my YouTube channel. And so I really took a close look at my own process um, as a painter and realized that, you know, let's make it easy just to get started because that is the hardest part. A lot of people kind of panic when they see their white canvas or their uh, white panel or whatever they're working on. and um, they, they panic so much that they just don't even get started and there's nothing worse than not getting started So even if you make a mess and it's ugly as what happens in the play stage a lot Hey, at least you did something and that's better than not doing anything. So that's kind of where that black painting is right now and Then I progress on to you know the middle stage, which is where I start to take more risks and uh uh, try new techniques I haven't tried before, try new tools I haven't done before, try a weird color, introduce a new shape, you know, anything goes to like get if you're stuck, like what do you have to do to get unstuck? So I kind of call that my explore stage. And that is kind of a long process the, in the life of a painting for me, that is kind of the longest um, part of the process because a lot of change occurs and uh, I never really know what's gonna happen when I'm in the explore stage, but um, it doesn't really matter to me as long as, you know, A, the painting is moving forward and um, and then, you know, a little bit of thought starts to come into the picture, uh, literally. You know, do I like what's happening? And I like to ask myself, you know, what don't I have? And um, what's working? What's not working? What do, I, what do I love? Is there anything that I love? So I'm, I'm essentially during the middle stage looking for, things to start to jump out at me and say, you know, this feels like me. Um, it, it feels personal. It feels unique. Uh, maybe it's something I hadn't seen before. I'm always on the lookout for things that capture my, um, my attention in a painting because it's an evolution. It's a process that evolves. And as it's evolving, I need to constantly be aware of what's happening in front of me. It's not like you do these things mindlessly forever. The play stage is like that, but in the middle when it's the explore stage, I'm constantly on the lookout for, again, you know, an interesting transition between two colors or a shape that just all of a sudden appeared that is so unique and strange. I love strange shapes. So if I see that, that might be something I want to feature in my painting. So. I'm on the lookout for that kind of thing. And uh, what else is going on here? Um, well, here's part of my studio where uh, just on the tables that I have here, I like to um, have a nice long table and have my palette all spread out and just, you know, I kind of cover it with uh, freezer paper just so that it's easy cleanup. I hate cleanup. I mean, who doesn't hate cleanup, I guess, but, um, yeah, this is just freezer paper and I can toss it into my waist and uh, get started again. So yeah, that's kind of the overall thing that I've got going on here. And um, I do love carts, carts that are on wheels. Um, they're just so, to me, like efficient because you can move them to wherever you're working and they store so much. And I actually saw this cart and um, a, a model of it and wanted to have one very similar to it made. So a local cabinet maker made this. And then as far as like my panels go, um, I do tend to work on kind of when, you, well, I don't really think about what, you know, a lot of these are, I don't know what, what size I'm gonna work on. I don't wanna really have to think about, oh, is this like a normal size or whatever. But uh, this particular painting, um, these panels were custom made and um, they had to be custom made even more so because I kind of made a mistake when I was measuring the paper and I didn't cut it. Um, evenly, it's supposed to be two paintings originally that were like a diptych, but instead it turned out to be a quadriptych, um, four unequal panels and um, a really, really challenge it, uh, challenging. It was, um, uh, their works on paper mounted onto Baltic birch cradled panels. And 
um, when it was time for me to determine, you know, where do I cut these paintings? I mean, even, even that thought of like cutting through your painting is not something you do lightly. Um, but, you know, again, a lot of things take courage and, you know, it's either that or what, nothing. So I wanted to mount these and, and have it be kind of versatile where I could switch the panels around so some of the panels can go upside down. Um, you can take the right panel and move it on to the left. It, it doesn't really matter because uh, balance is, is something that I'm always aware of. Just like any artist, um, you know, you kind of feel that it's an intuitive thing. And this particular painting is all about mark making. I love marks. I love shapes. And I also love complex color. And, you know, those are the three things I'm always aiming for. They can all coexist together. I could also just make it about marks and just, you know, have it be one color, or I could have it be only about shape, um, have a very simplified palette. But these are just some close-ups of like some of the things that I, I love to play with in terms of, you know, edge quality and um, the mark making is, is something that I feel, um, it, yes, it looks a little chaotic and I do quiet down a lot of that. In, in the final editing or clarify stage. But the reason why I think I leave so much behind is because especially now, um, I feel like not only like my life before the pandemic was pretty chaotic and, you know, um, so many things to do, never enough time. Um, the feeling that, you know, you only, you have to make so much of each day because that's one last day you're gonna have tomorrow. And, there's a lot of pressure and then you know you add to that a pandemic and um, a lot of my all of my workshops were either postponed i had one scheduled for vienna that's postponed for 2021 i had um, three workshops scheduled for new zealand and that was um, uh, postponed no it was actually canceled i don't think that one's going to actually be rescheduled um, thank goodness they've been so um, smart the way they've handled the pandemic but in the u.s um, as anybody knows, it's frightening, um, it's scary. I spend a lot of time just looking at the news and, you know, it's a damper. Um, how can you feel um, a lot of joy right now? It's awfully tough knowing that so many people are suffering and, you know, with the protests and um, around the country, um, you know, just, it makes you really try to put yourself in other people's shoes. What are they going through? Are they being kicked out of their housing? Um, or do they have food to eat? You know, what are they doing? And all these things weigh on you and it's a cumulative thing. Um, day after day, you know, if, 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 the, news, if, if the news isn't getting better, um, and a lot of times it's not, in fact, a lot of times it's just getting worse. Um, yeah, that's impacted how I feel. And um, that's one of the reasons why I thought that I really wanted to talk a little bit about how it has impacted me because um, I do a lot of documenting of, you know, what I'm up to and um, what I do in my studio. But um, the reality is that I, I feel this really heavy weight and I'm sure that you do as well um, with all this isolating and and trying to stay away from people, keeping our social distance. And, you know, we have a grandchild and we can't go see her. We got to see her for a little while at first when they came to visit us because it was safer in Montana than in, in Utah. But now they're back home and, you know, we literally are not seeing them. And our grandchild's growing up and we can't go see her. And that's really hard. Um, but we also have friends who've lost jobs, who've been laid off, or, you know, their workload has really gone way down because um, the pandemic has impacted them and then other people are trying to open a business right now. They were probably making plans over the last year and then all of a sudden this happens. So just any scenario, the more you think about it, um, well, it's a lot to think about. And so I think it's, um, I feel very lucky as an artist because um, there have been, you know, Anytime there's like something really hard to deal with, uh, art is the one place you can go. It's the one thing you can do. Uh, any creativity, that's, you know, any creativity, that's the way it is. But for me as a painter, um, this is where I came after our fire and, and this is where I do find a lot of 
piece and um, because it's so you know right brain it's an opportunity to just uh, get away from it all you're not you're not thinking about the world when you're when you're painting necessarily I mean subconsciously you are but mostly it's um, it's it's transformative it, it takes you away it's almost like a vacation um, it's not easy and it's not always fun but on the other hand it um, definitely allows you to um, explore things that are, are more related to you know how do I like this color how do I like that shape how do I like this edge and those things are not nearly as heavy and weighted and you know somewhat um, dark as thinking about the world and what's going on so um, I look at the many periods of my life when art was just such a um, a wonderful uh, place to kind of escape to and so I'm just really grateful to be an artist and uh, yeah um, so maybe I'll just do some painting now and uh, yeah, this is my studio. All right. So this is Arches Oil Paper. It's one of my favorite surfaces to work on. And this is, it's again, it's 22 by 30. So it's kind of a nice size to work on. And, you know, for those people who sometimes like, you know, people tell me that they have a very small space and they can't work large. And so one um, solution possibly is to, um, you know, pick a size that you do feel comfortable working on. It can be as small as six by six inches or, you know, whatever fits in your studio. And then, you know, work in multiples. So work on a lot of them. And then when you're all done, you can piece them all together and make a much larger work. So. That's another way you can work in series and also kind of scale up, get the feeling of working large. Um, I just want to sort of push this one tool here. Just explore. luscious marks and then I want to know how well they smear it's like how would you express fear um, confusion chaos um, uncertainty the world we live in right now is all of those things. And, you know, how do you express that? And I feel like just using my hand. I think I've just had this urge to use my hand because um, unlike, you know, any other tool, it's, it's just the most direct um, connection between me and, and this paper. There's a huge clump on my hand. And I just want to um, energize this paper as much as I can to begin with. Mark making and definitely playing.
just plain cold wax medium with my Galka gel. See how that moves that around. It kind of stays pretty much on its own, which is kind of interesting. thinking of dirty, grungy, and because this is so bright and sunny, I mean, I don't want this painting to, I'm already feeling like I don't want it to be really bright and sunny, but I do want complexity, and that's what this will do. It's going to just give this some depth, variety, interest, contrast the same family I mean it's but it's um, warm and, and the other the red is a cool red stand back even though it's not supposed to look like anything right now yeah that's about how I'm feeling <laughs> yeah that's about it um, it feels dark it feels like there's some um, anger maybe and some confusion and all the things that I talked about so um, I would just say that so far I'm happy because I think my emotions are having a place to come out okay, so I'm going to take some close-ups of this painting as it is right now disaster area but that's kind of what I want right now actually so here's some close-ups some of the marks really right now just um, murky um, there are some marks but it's largely a very dark to dark mid-tone painting not a lot of lights I've covered up much of the white paper with dirty muddy color but that's okay and here's some drippy drippy areas um, again with the 50 50 Gamzol to Galkid and I love to use my fingers um, with the Winsor Newton oil bar. So this is kind of, you can see the thicker paint up here where I scrape back into it. And whether it stays that thick, I'm not sure. But it's very different to see it up close than it is even, you know, from far away. And I'm going to um, do some still images now. All right, and this is like a first layer, so um, there's a question how far I can go when everything's so wet. And so what I can do is make that a feature of this painting. Um, yes, there are a lot of murky grays and things that, you know, it's not about being pretty. So I can um, even now start to carve out more content. And my content is this anger and rage and, you know, uncertainty and because what I don't have right now is anything solid you know it's not about being solid this one's not about being solid because um, it's about not feeling whole I think and not feeling normal not feeling good um, about anything pretty much and so I don't want I wouldn't want that to be the feature of this painting I'd rather it be about something that's a lot less tangible than that so I, in some ways I have to be a little careful that I don't do too much calming down because it's going to have to be very selective. Okay, I just tap the, um, it's like three little value circles here. And I'm getting over to mono. 
can see where it says mono on my phone and then click done. So um, looking at these values, I would say, yeah, there's a lot of dark, probably a secondary amount of midtone and then the least amount of white. Um, so I'm, I'm fine with that um, sort of hierarchy right now. And I just want to um, kind of introduce this shape and have it be a little off center, um, tilt it a bit. You're not going to notice it much. This is going to be something very subtle. This color change, um, pretty much the same value, but more of a color change. So it's um, a it's variety within my dark, since you can't see very well. Okay, that's what that looks like. And then just as I take it off, you can just see you pull that away. And you know you can see up close that there is a difference, um, not so much in value but in color. There is a color shift there. And having this going through my head a lot is this all shades of Black Lives Matter. And it's just been in my mind. I don't, I don't know. I think it's just coming out right now. I didn't, I had ideas, but it's nothing like this. But I think it's this all shades of, I don't often use text, but I think there's times. So I'm going to take some close-ups of this painting, as it is right now, disaster area. But that's kind of what I want right now, actually. So here's some close-ups, some of the marks. It's really right now just um, murky. Um, there are some marks, but it's largely a very dark to dark mid-tone painting. Not a lot of lights. I've covered up much of the white paper with dirty, muddy color. But that's okay. And here's some drippy, drippy areas. Um, again, with the 50-50 Gamsol to Galkid. And I love to use my fingers um, with the Winsor Newton oil bar. 
So this is kind of, you can see the thicker paint up here where I scrape back into it and whether it stays that thick, I'm not sure. But it's very different to see it up close than it is even, you know, from far away. 